Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria suspends two-month-old strike after a meeting in Abuja. A bill seeking to give legal backing to state security outfits passes second reading at the House of Representatives. Supporters of President Muhammadu Buhari open accounts on India-owned micro-blogging site Koo as federal government refuses to lift ban on Twitter. Good morning and thanks for joining us today on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a bright and beautiful and chilly morning. I don't know how it is at your end, but we'll welcome you uh, to the start of a beautiful day. I am Annetta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogbon. Good morning also and welcome to, yes, like you said, a little chilly Thursday morning. Uh, looks like it might just rain. We probably need to check up on the weather report and see if it will be a rainy Thursday across Lagos. But good morning. And of course, uh, so those who struggled to get back home to the mainland yesterday, the traffic I heard was insane. Uh, um, we that, wish you, of course, the strength of God. That's one thing Nigerians, I, I believe, should have already been used to the traffic and the, you know, with the commutes from the island to the mainland and vice versa. Uh, so but, it's pro probably never going to be easy to get used to being on the road for three, you know, four hours, you know, just to drive a 45 minute journey. Mm. Uh, but, but I think, safe, especially because of how unsafe it is in Lagos currently. Mm. But I think it's, it's getting better. I mean, that leads to our top trending, which is that the president is set to arrive um, the, um, Lagos today, Thursday. And that's because he will be inaugurating the 157 kilometer Lagos Ibadan standard gauge rail project. And this is at the Mobolaji Johnson Railway Station in Ibutameta. I have seen pictures of this uh, train station. It looks amazing. It, it reminds me of the um, Oshidi Terminal. You know, it's, it looks fantastic. So the hope really is that everything is up and running. The structures are put in place to make sure that there are no lapses in the system. And that more Nigerians get the awareness that there is a train station here at Ibutemeta and that, you know, this is where you can get to in Lagos and beyond, you know, when you visit that train station. I think this is something we should all, um, you know, we should all look forward to doing. I mean, I think it's great, you know. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it, um, I would say it's great. You know, there's you know, always going to be, you know, um, you know, a chance to celebrate, you know, one or two things, you know, that we would say as, you know, some positives um, with regards to infrastructure. Um, it definitely will help with uh, transportation between Lagos and Ibadan, you know, and, and further um, and all of that. Um, it may not necessarily affect the traffic in Lagos, you know, because that train um, uh, line doesn't necessarily go through Lagos. There's meant to be the uh, light rail, I believe, or the speed train that was, you know, planned for Lagos, as uh, I think they were, they were proposing in 2017, it still hasn't, you know, gotten anywhere. But I heard that, you know, there's going to be more work done on that. But so, um, yes, trains have been one of the things that the current administration has mm -hmm. put some investment in. Um, they've, you know, recorded, you know, successes here and there. The Abuja Kaduna and a couple of others. Uh, um, have of course been functional. There have you know been you know um, complaints from users or commuters. You know every now and then, or a train breaks down here and there, and you know and all of that. But it still is something that I believe that we should still uh, commend and say, yeah, at Definitely. least you know there is a train Definitely. now, and and you know it should also encourage uh, more investment in in the railway sector, and more investment you know PPP arrangements if possible in you know railways generally across Nigeria. Uh, for at least to reduce the amount of vehicles on the road, to reduce the amount of people who have to go by road, um, and um, you know, just ease you know the stress of you know millions and millions of Nigerians who uh, commute between those uh, these two states and uh, and beyond. Yes, yes, indeed. And, and there's really lots to celebrate about this. It's a project that commenced in 2017. They began you know test runs in December, and they're saying that it's the first double tracker rail you know rail project in West Africa. So yes, it should be able to ease the burden on the roads, you know, and we just hope that we get more of this in the next administration. In addition to all the other things I need fixing, infrastructure is definitely one of them. And uh, we definitely commend the Lagos State, I beg your pardon, the federal government uh, for this project. And uh, moving on now, the Twitter ban is still a very big topic in Nigeria, but uh, it seems Nigerians will be getting some relief. I, for one, am getting some relief because, you know, we know how Nigerians have been downloading VPNs. I didn't download VPNs. I can't be paranoid and think, oh, 
you know, all the talk about how we can be used to hack your accounts and all of that, you know, never really know how true that is. But there's Cool. So Cool is a microblogging platform um, owned by, by, you know, entrepreneurs in India. So it was launched last year. I think it has about 50,000 users right now. So just a day after the presidency um, declared that Twitter was suspended in Nigeria, um, the CEO of Ku put out a message out there saying, Ku is now available in Nigeria. I'm encouraging all Nigerians to join the platform. You know, it's going to be available in local languages as well. I downloaded Ku to see what the buzz was all about. And it, it, seems, it seems pretty great, you know, at least so far as an alternative to Twitter. Nigerians, Nigerians have been signing up to Ku as well, opening Ku accounts. You can also tweet. You can also, actually, they call it Ku. You can Ku, you can follow, you know. So I think this just makes us realize that, first of all, Nigerians need to develop their own microblogging sites. We need to do a lot in this space. I would definitely give kudos to platforms like Nairaland. It's a homegrown indigenous Nigerian, you know, um, social media site, um, Nairaland. And I heard talks about them, um, you know, ad getting advances, uh, you know, to sell, but they refuse. They turn that down. So it's great that we have that. But I feel there's still, you know, the, 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 the sky is still big enough for every other um, investor, every other entrepreneur, every other person in the t in the tech space who wants to do something great, you know, when it comes to you know digital apps like this. So for us to look all the way to India for an alternative to Twitter, um, it's great. But Nigerians can do better when it comes to like indigenous apps like this. What do you think? Yeah, Nigerians uh, should be encouraged to develop their own apps yes. so that Nigerians can be on you know those social media networks and. Whenever those apps see that the president violated it, its rules, they lock up the manager in Panty and, <laughs> and throw their stuff you know, inside police van. Is that what it is? Oh, I'm and, so and, and Lai Mohammed can wake up one morning and say, well, I don't like the color of this bird, and suspend the app, you know, because the app is giving Namdi Kanu a platform Come on. to... Come on. So, I, so, so, you know, they say that when Nigerians um, are pushed to the wall, they break the wall and keep going back. Um, we, we're changing the conversation. There's absolutely nothing to celebrate here, in my opinion. Absolutely nothing. I don't know what Ku is. I've never said the first time that I'm hearing about it. Um, doesn't even sound like you know an app that I would be interested in. Not different from the other one uh, by Adam Ugaba. Um, the the important part of this conversation, VPN, Ku, um, um, Kukuruku, any of it. Oh my. Um, is the fact that. We currently are in, in a situation where, currently in, in a nation where the government can wake up one morning and feel like its ego has been bruised and suspend a platform that has created business and created opportunities and opened up a space for millions and millions of Nigerians. The government can decide one morning and take that away simply because, you know, one tweet was deleted. So what happens when we create our own social media site and a tweet is deleted that's or somebody why, that, you know, tweets something that the really president is on regulations handle, these um, that they don't like? So, so what, there's absolutely nothing to celebrate here. And once again, when Nigerians are pushed to the wall, they push the wall down and keep going back. It makes absolutely no sense to be jumping to another app because this one has been celebrated or has um, been suspended. Mm -hmm. the, the, the conversation should still remain on the fact that the rights of Nigerians to so freedom of expression has been trampled upon. Mm -hmm. And that's where we should continue to leave that conversation, not go to a different app to continue. Um, how many more apps, you know, will be suspended? If the government wakes up tomorrow morning and says, you know, banks should withdraw 5,000 naira from everybody's account, bank managers will, of course, would, you know, bend down and say, okay, no, Allah, we can't disrespect the president. Lama Ahmed will say, oh, we need to fund so and so projects. Or somebody else will give some excuse. And, you know, Nigerians would complain and complain and complain and say, oh, oh, oh well, let's not use these old banks again. Let's go to our online banks that won't do this to us. Makes absolutely no sense. There should be a continuous demand for accountability and yes. to respect the rights of the Nigerian person that is guaranteed by the Constitution and the UN Charter. And that's where the conversation should end. Nobody should be cooing anywhere or should be good trying to get into any... <laughs> Um, Indian uh, social media platform, and that's that's where it is. Nothing exciting about this. And and another development is that the uh, minister Lai Mohammed has said that the ban on Twitter would be lifted when and only when Twitter is registered and uh, 
licensed and operate within all the laws of Nigeria. I really have no idea what that means, if they need to draw up an agreement, because that's something Lagos State Governor Son Wudu has said, that there probably needs to be an agreement between Twitter and Nigeria for, for the ban to be suspended. So now, Lai Mohammed is saying this. We're looking forward to just what the details of that agreement would be, how Twitter would get a license. I'm not aware of Twitter getting licensed in any other country, because it's, it's, it's an online platform that people simply download from free apps, app stores, and, and you know, they, they get that up and running. So looking forward to how that will end and to the outcome of the, of the summon, you know, of the House of Reps and in about nine days now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, all, it's, it's all just a charade, you mm -hmm. know, and eventually, you know, I believe that uh, you know, eventually it will pass. Um, whatever reasons and whatever, um, you know, explanations that the current, uh, the government has for taking their steps, you know, they've moved from the fact that, you know, oh, you know, how dare you delete the president's tweet to saying, oh, it gives platforms to Namdi Kano, to saying, oh, it gives platforms to Boko Haram. Um, didn't they know that there were um, um, IPOB members or before you know, the tweet South, was deleted? Before the tweet was deleted? Did all of this suddenly become revealed when the tweet was deleted? Come on. It, 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 so, you know, we, we, um, I'm, uh, to be honest, I'm actually tired of talking about Twitter and uh, all of it. Um, we would have to continue to, and I personally will leave the conversation at the fact that um, it seems like somebody felt like how dare Twitter deletes, you know, President's tweet, um, even when, you know, they have refused to you know, realize that they simply should have worded those tweets better. Uh, they simply should have maybe rearranged the president's script while well, he spoke freely, um, which is, of course, his right. But if those statements seemed inciting, then there should be a, a, a publicity team on the president's um, um, on, in the president to do damage to say, control yeah, rather than you know, make it worse. This is not what we, we meant. You know, this is not what we, which, or the president was trying to say, and make it better for Nigerians to understand and say, okay, well, it's fine. We'll move on. Instead of doing that, you know, we're going in circles and, you know, making all these laws that don't exist and trying to prosecute people for laws that still do not exist. Hmm. Now. now, still talking about, you know, locally grown apps or, you know, homegrown apps, indigenous apps like that. We know that um, drivers on e-healing platforms like Uber and Boat, you know, they've been protesting in, in the past few weeks. We even had a driver on one of those platforms to come out to say, you know, they're demanding an increase in the fare. The price of everything is, is high now, but they're saying, you know, Bolt and Uber is, you know, the, ch the, the fare that they charge is, is, quite, is quite low, and they're asking for that. And um, we know that the national president of PEDPA, PEDPA is the, is the association for the, you know, professional drivers and private, private owners in Nigeria. Um, his name is Idris Shonoga. So he announced yesterday that, uh, to journalists in Lagos, that PEDPA has partnered with indigenous apps, um, and they're called um, Active Ride and My Cab app. These companies are also into e-hailing um, as replacements for Uber. I know other apps such as Oga Taxi, this and that. You know, they're also, you know, Nigerian-owned apps, Nigerian-owned e-hailing services that, that, you know, that are give, trying to give Uber and Boat a run for their money. But what we've seen here that they're, they're partnering with is the app called Active Ride, Active Ride and My Cab app. So they're saying that when they compare these new apps to Bolt and Uber, they're getting a better deal. So Uber and Bolt would charge them about 20% commission on every ride, but Active Ride and My Cab app would charge them 15%. And that out of this 15%, 5% goes to a safe safety fund where they can always access for you know, emergency use and all of that. They're saying also there's more security, more safety. They just started listing out all the advantages of these locally um, owned apps to say, let Nigerians, you know, go over to these apps and you know begin to use indigenous apps that would help help them but my, my concern here is it's great that these uber drivers or these these drivers in nigeria are getting a better deal right but if the reason why you left is because you wanted uber to charge more that means these apps will be charging more and the question is, can Nigerians actually afford to pay more? Already Uber and Bolt and any other e-healing service is expensive already as it is. I remember asking one of the Uber drivers to say, Uber is expensive, Bolt is expensive. These e-healing apps are expensive. So if you're saying you want Uber and Bolt to raise up the price, how can Nigerians afford that? And the explanation was, you know, this is a, this is a luxury service. It's not for the common man. So 
um, Nigerians should be getting ready to pay more. I mean, that's just what it means. Nigerians should be getting ready to pay more on these local apps, even though it would, you know, treat or be a better deal for the drivers. So that's that's really where we are right now with the Uber boats and uh, e-hailing drivers in the country. Mm, yeah, well, um, or whatever it is that makes uh, their services, uh, you know, more affordable for Nigerians and also for you know them to be able to take something home at the end of the week or the end of the month. Um, a lot of these uh, drivers uh, drive vehicles that are owned by somebody else, yes. and they have to remit it at the end of every month or at the end of, the, of every week. And so, you know, they should have legitimate reason to complain that, oh, you know, they're not making enough. You know, after driving the whole of Lagos or the whole of Nigeria, maintenance, uh, maintenance, costs. and all of that. Yes, petrol and all of that. You know, they still don't make enough because of the charges um, uh, by the um, uh, app company. So. Um, whatever it is, you know, that makes their job easier and makes commuting easier for Nigerians and at the same time affordable for Nigerians. Um, um, I feel like, you know, these apps that you've mentioned should also take very, very seriously security for, you know, riders, security for their drivers also, better tracking systems, better response to crisis situations and uh, some of all of that. Uh, those are they should, those should be the um, added extra benefits, not just you know five percent, yes. um, you know deduction in in the you know the rates that they charge. So um, I'm all for it. However, it is you know that makes drivers um, you know have a, a better deal and makes it easier for them to do their business, um, and of course also it you know, makes it easier for Nigerians to assess and use these apps. I'm I'm I'm, I'm all for it. Whatever it is. Yes, and I think the conversation really from Twitter to e-healing rise is just the emphasis on the importance of technology. Technology seems to be driving everything now. Technology makes everything easier. So, I mean, a, an e-hailing taxi service would never exist without technology because all these things are all, you know, basically online. So we need to begin to, especially the government, should begin to think in that direction and not to impose bans and suspensions and, you know, basically dracon draconian laws on Nigerian entrepreneurs who simply want to innovate in the country. Yeah. But that's where um, it is um, on this day uh, for our top trending. We'll take a break here and return uh, to see what's making the news on the papers.